Hey guys, here's our movie presentation on solid oxide fuel cells by Sally and Sydney. So, solid oxide fuel cells are electromechanical conversion devices that produce electricity directly from oxidizing a fuel. So, some advantages to a solid oxide fuel cell are its high efficiency, fuel flexibility, and relatively low cost. But a large disadvantage is its high operating temperature. So, a fuel cell was invented by Sir William Grove in the year 1839, but since his invention, many other scientists have been researching it, such as Emil Burr, who studied it when he was researching some periodic materials. Solid oxide today still generates electricity by a chemical reaction which provides power to something such as a light bulb or a city. As technology progresses, solid oxide is common in more areas, but cost is holding solid oxide back. Today, fuel cells are commonly found stationary in schools, hospitals, power plants, banks, and many other places. And portable solid oxide fuel cells are being further developed as well. So here's a short video on how a solid oxide fuel cell works. A fuel cell is like a battery that always runs. It consists of three parts, an electrolyte, an anode, and a cathode. For a solid oxide fuel cell, the electrolyte is a solid ceramic material. The anode and cathode are made from special inks that coat the electrolyte. Unlike other types of fuel cells, no precious metals, corrosive acids, or molten materials are required. Next, an electrochemical reaction converts fuel and air into electricity without combustion. A solid oxide fuel cell is a high temperature fuel cell. At high temperature, warmed air enters the cathode side of the fuel cell and steam mixes with fuel to produce reformed fuel, which enters on the anode side. Next, the chemical reaction begins in the fuel cell. As the reformed fuel crosses the anode, it attracts oxygen ions from the cathode. The oxygen ions combine with the reformed fuel to produce electricity, water, and small amounts of carbon dioxide. The water gets recycled to produce the steam needed to reform the fuel. The process also generates the heat required by the fuel cell. As long as there is fuel, air, and heat, the process continues producing clean, reliable, affordable energy. So, now that you know how it works, here are a few pictures to show what they are. Okay, so one major benefit of using solid oxide fuel cells is that they have an extremely low emission of CO2 and other pollutants. And they are also highly reliable and have a low amount of maintenance required so they can be left alone for extended periods of time. A main drawback to this energy source is it costs a lot to make large scale versions of it so it's unreasonable to start a huge production of them for commercial reasons and it also has a slow heat up and cool down time which means it can't be used well in for transportation methods and it, operates at high temperatures, so companies and organizations have been working to work to fix that. And we believe that this is a realistic fuel source because they have already been used in buildings and in NASA missions, and they're, it's extremely reliable and efficient, and they can do work with little supervision and maintenance. So some examples of research being done today is the Okay, the National Energy Technology Laboratory, which is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Energy's Office of Fossil Energy, has teamed up with private industries to research and develop the solid oxide fuel cell. And it has three main areas of study, cost reduction, coal-based, and research and development. And another project that's being worked on is by the University of Maryland and Redox Power that have teamed together to create a solid oxide fuel cell at one-tenth the cost and one-tenth the size of commercial SOFC systems today. So thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching folks. folks.